Hello, and welcome to Curator's Corner at the Nevada State Museum. My name is Mina Stafford, and I'm the Curator of Education. And in this episode, I'd like to talk about the ethnic diversity that existed in Nevada in the second half of the 19th century. This was all, of course, because of the gold rush. Everyone from all over the world wanted to come to the American West to find their fortune in mining and in all the industries that grow up around mining. And one of these groups was the Chinese. Now, a majority of the Chinese people that came to America were from the Guangdong province in China. And this is a southeastern coastal province where the people already had the tradition of going overseas to find their fortune and then coming home. They also had experience in mining and agriculture and other skills. So once they're here, they're far away from their homes, far away from their families, so they don't have that support structure. So what they did was create district associations, a group of people who were maybe from the same birthplace or spoke the same language or did the same job, would get together for mutual aid. And these groups were there for housing, uh, job placement, uh, language. If one person writes Chinese and the other one doesn't, they can help out. And for parties and celebrations that you would normally have with your family. So there were, in a large Chinatown like San Francisco, there were several different district associations all over town vying for attention. So eventually, in San Francisco, several of them banded together and created the Chinese Six Companies Association. And Chinese Six Companies then had kind of branch buildings in other Chinatowns around the American West. This building that they built was called a Joss House by the Euro-Americans. And this is sort of a wrong name for it. Uh, Joss is a mispronunciation of the Portuguese word for deities, which is Dios. And that's because there is an altar in every Joss house for praying to deities, but it's not the primary purpose of the building. They were also meeting halls, a place for music, socialization, uh, parties, celebrations. Um, it's like a common room, common building for everybody to enjoy and to share news from home. So here in Carson City, we had a Chinatown that was east of Stewart Street along 3rd. And you can go down there and see there's a plaque um, on the street side there if you wanted to see. In our Chinatown, it was smaller. It only had two Joss houses. One was a Chinese Six Companies Association and the other was a Chinese Freemasons. Now it's not Freemasons like some of us are members of, but it's similar in that it was a secret society and members would be elected in by other members, sponsored in. So the Chinese Freemason building and the Chinese Six Companies building were both in Chinatown. And as the Chinatown population decreased over time um, into the 20th century and the 1920s, the buildings just were dilapidated and falling apart. And then when the final resident of our Chinatown passed away, the Ormsby County Sheriff decided to preserve the altar that was in the Chinese Freemasons Joss House. And here's an image of it when it was first on display at the Nevada State Museum in the 40s with all of the pieces and parts that go with it. Uh, today, we have the central section on display in our history gallery. We also have an amazing model of the Winnemucca Chinatown that was made from photographs and the recollections of a previous resident. In this model, you can see it's a smaller Chinatown, so it has only one Joss house, and it's up on a hill in a prominent position, and there's a community garden in the center. That was a primary example. Almost every Chinatown had a garden somewhere. So the Nevada State Museum, of course, collects the heritage of everyone in Nevada, including the Chinese. And so we have a large collection of objects either donated to us directly or found in historical archaeology sites from those Chinatowns. 
And one of them is this practice drum from Tuscarora, Nevada. So Tuscarora had a Chinatown that was interconnected with the Euro-Americans in Tuscarora. They worked very cooperatively together. And the Primo family lived there. Uh, the father had a mercantile, and the sons Roy and Antoine grew up in Tuscarora, interacting with the Chinatown and with the Chinese. They were actually part of the Chinatown band. Um, and this is a practice drum that they donated. Um, and it's meant to teach you to drum in the center of the drum, right? Because it's narrow and it's hard, you know, you can't drum anywhere else. Uh, and a, a real drum would be much larger, but you still need to drum in the center. They have another drum here. It's called a tom-tom drum. Uh, and a tom-tom drum is characteristically has these tacks around the sides, has a picture of a dragon on one side, and a mythological bird on the other side. And this is something that was made in China specifically for export into the United States. One of the things that a band might do is perform during a Chinese New Year's celebration. So like I said, these district associations would be the ones that sponsored the celebration, and so their band would perform. Um, and another thing that happens during Chinese New Year is the giving of gifts, uh, usually to children. And so here I have a pair of shoes that were given as a gift to Alice Terry when she lived with her father at the Dean Ranch in 1903. There at the ranch, there was a Chinese cook who served all of the workers, and he is the one that imported these shoes and gave them to Alice. And as you can see, there's beautiful embroidery on the silk. It's cotton on the inside. It's got a wooden base and then a leather sole. And they're called Manchu boat shoes, mostly because they're shaped like a boat, right? So as the 19th century ended and the beginning of the 20th century, there were fewer and fewer Chinese people immigrating to the United States, mostly because of discriminatory immigration laws and other discriminatory laws that made it hard for the Chinese to do business and to own land and things like that. So fewer and fewer people were here, so their Chinatown buildings fell to, into disrepair and disappeared. And, but there are some things that were left, like these objects and the gifts given and traditions. We still celebrate Chinese New Year here at the Nevada State Museum every year. And I just wanted to wish everyone a Happy New Year. Xin Yin Kuai Le. Mm -hmm.